millions of Americans took to the polls to make their voices heard on this Super Tuesday. Contests for both parties are being held in 14 states, from California to Vermont and Virginia. Republicans are also holding a presidential primary in Alaska. Meanwhile, in Iowa, Democrats will reveal the results from their all-mail-in contest after the National Democrats push the state from its traditional leadoff spot. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. San Diegans have had the chance to vote in several local races tonight, and we have team coverage of it all for you. Richard Allen is in Lincoln Park keeping track of the San Diego City Council District 4 race. Jesse Pagan is focusing on the battle for the U.S. Senate, and Rocio de la Fe is downtown where Democrats hosted an election night watch party and closely following the San Diego mayoral race. Here is where those mayoral rates stand as of now. Mayor Gloria is leading with 52% of the vote. Larry Turner following with 23%. Let's get right now to Rocio, who just talked to Mayor Todd Gloria. Rocio. Yeah, well, unofficial election night results suggest that incumbent Todd Gloria and Larry Turner will be facing one another in the November general election. We just heard from Todd Gloria, as mentioned a moment ago, who said he feels good about the results so far. Now, Mayor Gloria was expected to advance to the November election, but the question until now had been who would he face? Uh, and right now, numbers show it could be Larry Turner. Turner is a Marine. He's a police officer here in the city of San Diego, and this is his first political campaign race. Last month, there were questions about his residency, but a judge ruled that a lawsuit challenging that won't be moving forward unless Turner advances to November. Genevieve Jones-Wright, Daniel Smyszowski, and Jane Glasson are also running against Gloria. All of them have criticized the mayor for mismanagement of city funds and resources. Gloria tonight says if reelected, he will continue to invest in city infrastructure, housing, and the safety of all neighborhoods. Tonight's results are an endorsement of continuing to do things that we have done together over the last four years. Pave more roads, house more homeless people, build more affordable homes for working and middle class San Diegans, and keeping San Diego one of the safest big cities in this country. That is what we've endeavored to do under the most difficult of circumstances over the last four years. It is what we will continue to do when we get four more years this November. Now that was Mayor Gloria again as he addressed the crowd here tonight as he seeks to be reelected. Now the unofficial election night results include all of the mail-in ballots that were received prior to today election day as well as the 10 days of early voting. All of the election results are unofficial until final certification of the election that is set to take place on April 4th. Thank you, Rocio. Uh, the race to fill the seat left vacant by the late Senator Dianne Feinstein is a key one in California and in Washington, D.C. In last October, Governor Gavin Newsom appointed Democratic activist LaFonza Butler to the seat. From the start, Senator Butler said she would not be seeking the office for a full term, and that led to a hot race with four candidates, including former baseball star Steve Garvey, a Republican, spending a lot of time and money to be among the last names standing. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan is here with the results that are in so far. Jesse. You know, guys, any more proof that we need for this being a hot race? You just have to watch the ads that have been playing for the past several months just to see how close this was going to be. It's already, because of that, one of the most expensive Senate elections in California history. It's also different in that there are technically two contests for the same position. All right, let's get to some results. First and foremost, you see right there, Adam Schiff ahead with 36% of the vote. Steve Garby behind him in second, 29%. Katie Porter, a big name in Congress, 15%, as well as Barbara Lee with 7%. That's going to be for the full term here. Now, the second part of that is a partial term that voters were choosing on as well. And again, same picture, Adam Schiff, 34% in the lead, Steve Garvey, 31%. Now we have the two concurrent elections because of Senator Dianne Feinstein's death in September of last year. Her death prompted the special election we're having now. That's for the partial term. The winner will hold the office from November to January to finish out Feinstein's term. Then whoever wins the regular election in November will assume office for a full six-year term afterward. Now this race is running under the so-called jungle primary we have in California. That means both Democrats and Republicans are on the same primary ballot and the top two, regardless of party, would move on to the general election in November. As you saw, that seems to be turning out to be Schiff and Garvey, which should make for an interesting matchup for a big seat in so-called true blue California. Guys.
following it closely. Thanks so much, Jesse. Six of San Diego City Council seats are on today's ballot, including the vacant District 4 seat previously held by now County Supervisor Monica Montgomery Stepp. Uh, there are three candidates fighting for the open seat. Here's where that race stands right now. Henry Foster III has 54% with Cheetah Warren Darby at 27%. If this result stands, Henry Foster will take over immediately for that vacant seat. CBS H Richard Allen joins us live from Lincoln Park with more. Richard. Well, that's right. This special election here in District 4 is to replace former council member Monica Montgomery Stepp, who's moved on to the County Board of Supervisors after former supervisor Nathan Fletcher resigned last year amid a sex scandal. In the meantime, or citizens here in District 4 have lacked a direct representative on the council since December, and that's something they say they desperately need, especially after last month's devastating floods. And tonight we learned who that representative will be. With a clear majority of the vote, Henry Foster III declared his top priority as San Diego City Council's newest council member. Continuing to bring the voice of the community to City Hall. A community that is still reeling from last month's floods. And it, it was very sad, very, very sad. Michael Gonzalez has lived here in Mountain View for 34 years and says he's tired of feeling like his community has been forgotten. With that vacant spot right now, who's going to voice for, uh, you know, just a regular Joe like myself. We need somebody to speak up for us. We're not in Sanitas or nothing, but you know what? We're just as important as the next guy. Eddie Sanchez, who dropped off his ballot earlier this evening, says the need for representation is more important than ever, as his community is still trying to recover. When you consider the recent floods that we just had, uh, you know, nobody to stand up for this district. Uh, was hurtful. Foster says helping District 4 to continue to recover will be first and foremost on his agenda. We have a lot of families that were devastated and I think there's more that the city of San Diego can do. Also stressing that his district has lacked representation on the council long enough. And I'm just really looking forward to getting back to work and being there for my community and my family to make sure that we are at the table and that we get what we deserve. And the registrar has 30 days to officially certify these election results. Foster says he plans to work closely with the city clerk to be sworn into the city council as soon as possible after that certification takes place. Carlo and Marcella. Thanks, Richard. Tonight, more than a third of delegates are being decided as voters cast their ballots for who they want to be the Democratic and Republican nominees for president. Uh, the race for president is expected to be a rematch of the 2020 race between former President Trump and current president Joe Biden. Donnie Backus has the latest. Former President Donald Trump moves closer to becoming the Republican presidential nominee with projected wins in a number of states holding primaries this Super Tuesday. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. President Biden is also the projected winner in contest on the Democratic side as the race shifts towards the general election. Joe Biden better win, <laughs> all right? I mean, I think uh, the country, there's an awful lot at stake. Donald Trump has the answers, uh, and we, we need him. Voters in more than a dozen states cast their ballots with more than a third of delegates up for grabs. While Trump and Biden are clear front runners, neither can clinch the nomination this Super Tuesday. CBS News exit polls show immigration and the economy are the top issues on Republican voters' minds. I'm going to vote for anybody who says they're closing the border. Nikki Haley, Trump's remaining Republican challenger who kept her focus on Super Tuesday, picked up a projected win in Vermont. CBS News exit polling in Virginia showed most of her supporters identified as either independents or Democrats. Six in ten said their vote was mainly against Trump rather than for Haley. We'll be voting for Joe Biden in the in the general election, but I put in a vote for Nikki Haley today. Some Democrats chose not to vote for Biden to protest his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. I voted uncommitted um, because I want to send like a message that we are tired and we want a ceasefire. CBS News polling shows President Biden's support among key Democratic groups is not at the same levels as 2020. Donya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. We will be updating our election numbers right here on CBS 8 as soon as any new data comes in. You'll also be able to see them online at cbs8.com forward slash elections.